Is citywide fecal sludge management just a pipe dream? Like anything that is accomplished at a citywide scale, fecal sludge management requires planning and management for sustainable implementation. But at the same time, we need to think of steps to start taking now. We can't wait for years until a citywide sanitation plan has been developed and implemented, then find a full way to fully fund it, then wait to get buy-in from all the stakeholders. We can't wait for all that before we start to take the first steps. So in this module, I'm going to share with you now what's currently working in three different cities. Following this module, you'll be able to distinguish differences in fecal sludge management among the three presented cities and identify examples of what is and is not working in the service chain of each city. In fecal sludge management, we are coming up with solutions for existing cities and for the current situation. So we need to be able to adapt to the specific local situation. And most likely, no two solutions will look the same. We need to distinguish between solutions we can start to implement now to manage the current sludge crisis and the most optimal and sustainable solutions that we can continue to strive towards in the future. In this module, I'm going to focus on Hanoi, Vietnam, Kampala, Uganda, and Toyokawa, Japan. I will introduce you to the current reality of how fecal sludge management is evolving in different regions and what is working in these cities that is better than in many other cities, but what are still some of the remaining challenges. Vietnam is a unique situation. Since 1996, the building code has stipulated that any new construction includes septic tanks. And in Hanoi, the access to improved sanitation is greater than 95%. So the building code requires septic tanks, but it does not account for the emptying of fecal sludge, which is also the reason public entities do not have strategies in place to manage it. In fact, septic tanks are typically constructed under the house without access. And so a hole needs to be made in the floor of the kitchen to access the tank if sludge is going to be removed. This is what it looks like. After several years of operation, sludge accumulates in septic tanks. If it is not removed, it results in emergency situations, such as toilets backing up into houses. This demand has resulted in private emptying and transportation companies springing up to meet this need. In Hanoi, there are now over 40 private companies with over 100 trucks. So far, it sounds reasonably efficient and effective for fecal sludge management, right? Everyone has septic tanks. There's tons of companies and trucks running around to empty them. The law originally didn't plan for that, but private industry stepped in and filled a role. But unfortunately, that's not exactly the whole picture. What happens to the fecal sludge after it's emptied? Collection and transport companies are official and legally registered companies, and they have the right to empty septic tanks, but they do not actually have the right to discharge that sludge. In fact, that's because there's no designated place within the city for these private companies to discharge. So the service chain just stops there, and the trucks just dump the sludge wherever they can find a place. So virtually all the fecal sludge ends up directly in the environment. This is illustrated in the shit flow diagram of Hanoi prepared by Sondek. It shows in green what percentage of excreta in the city is safely managed and in red, what percentage is unsafely managed. However, as of last year, there is a new decree in place for the regulation of sludge, and fecal sludge is specifically mentioned as one type of sludge in this decree. Changes are not yet apparent, but this obviously takes some time to figure out after instituting the legal framework. It is very positive that the Vietnamese government 
has officially recognized the need to manage fecal sludge, and that now people understand the importance at a political level. Certainly, with such a strong government structure, changes will start to happen. Okay, and now, moving to Uganda. Most people in Kampala also have access to a toilet. However, that may mean 30 people are sharing it, and it's not actually clean enough to be used. Around 80% of the population is served by on-site systems. Of these, 70% are pit latrines, about half lined and half unlined, and the other 30% are septic tanks. To collect and transport all this fecal sludge, there are around 70 privately owned trucks operating that belong to two well-organized pit emptiers associations. There are also six manual emptying businesses using the gulper, working together with Water for People. KCCA, the Kampala Capital City Authority, wants to formalize the fecal sludge collection and transport sector, and this is high on their agenda. And there is also an operational treatment plant to deliver all that fecal sludge to, which is operated by NWSC, the National Water and Sewage Corporation. Two years ago, the Lubiji Fecal Sludge Treatment Plant opened up with a design capacity of 400 cubic meters per day. NWSC is also forward in thinking of solutions. For example, they had this tender out for private companies interested in the design, build, and operate of waste-to-energy business models at their treatment facility. There is also lots of applied research being conducted by the universities, research institutes, including SONDEC, NGOs, and NWSC. Here you see research on increasing rates of drying, generating fuel from fecal sludge for use in a kiln, and optimization of collection logistics. These are pictures of the Pit Emptiers Association. Another thing NWSC has done is set the fee for discharge that collection and transport companies have to pay low enough that is much cheaper than what they charge households, so the incentive of trucks for illegal dumping is quite low. In addition, NWSC provides space at their treatment plants to locate their associations and park their trucks. So what are the challenges still being faced in Kampala? This is the SFD for Kampala, also prepared by Sondek. You see safely managed excreta at 48% and unsafely managed at 52%. There's not enough treatment capacity. The Lubiji treatment plant was already operating at capacity within the first month it was built. To address this, NWSC reopened the Bugalobi wastewater treatment plant for discharge of fecal sludge which is not ideal as it's now over capacity, but much better than the alternative of illegal dumping. And good news, Bugalobi is under renovation and there are two more fecal sludge treatment plants called for in the sanitation master plan, one of which is in the planning phase, but not yet in the construction phase. Japan is a country where on-site and centralized sewer-based solutions have evolved in parallel. Japan can be held up as an example of how fecal sludge management can work as a long-term solution. There is an effective system of collection and transport in place with discharge to treatment plants subsidized. There are well-organized and functioning treatment plants. 30% of Toyokawa is served by on-site systems, and 100% of excreta is safely managed, as shown in this SFD prepared by Professor Hidenori Harada at Kyoto University. So why does fecal sludge management work so well in Japan? Due to the enabling environment. There's a system of laws and enforcement in place to ensure that every year, on-site systems are inspected and maintained by a licensed service provider. Collection and transport companies are licensed and regulated. 
legal discharge of fecal sludge is subsidized. The installation and manufacture of on-site systems is regulated and as are on-site discharge standards. So what has generated the successes in all three of these cities? We see that there is support and acceptance of the importance of sanitation and now fecal sludge management at the governmental level. In Hanoi and Kampala, the municipalities are willing to look for new and alternative solutions, which is critical. They have to be leaders to implement successful solutions as there are not a lot of models of success to follow. This is in combination with strong participation by the private sector, which is now being acknowledged by the government. So even though these governments are having to retrofit solutions to their existing situations, they're managing to piece together citywide approaches which can be implemented and then improved upon. For more information on SFDs, please visit the SFD Promotion Initiative Project hosted on the Susanna website, and also watch the module Shitflow Diagrams in our MOOC on Planning and Design of Sanitation Systems and Technologies. In this module, you learned about differences in fecal sludge management in Hanoi, Kampala, and Toyokawa, examples of what is and is not working in each of the cities, and were introduced to the shitflow diagrams illustrating safely and unsafely managed excreta for each of the cities. Thanks for joining. See you next time.